well one way to start all right so hey guys and welcome back to the channel let me close this just in case there's some breeze it seems like as of right now some of my videos are going to be in the car because this is like when i actually have the piece to record and today is thanksgiving eve so happy thanksgiving eve to all of you um i'm gonna do a recap basically of my third month um just an overall what i felt and then there will be some videos um, of me like week 9 where I'm in my 10th week of pregnancy. I'm 9 weeks in a couple days, like 11 weeks in a couple of days at the beginning of the third month and the one at the end of the third month um, with a little bit more detail. But so far I'm just going to get in and do an overview of everything that I did feel. And here we go. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Alright, so kicking off my third month of pregnancy, which is weeks 9 through 13, um, Let's see, which for me was September 8th through the 14th is what week 9 was. On the 8th, um, I was craving watermelon. Like in my ninth, ninth week, I craved watermelon. Like, I mean, so bad to where I remember one day I went to work and I literally had um, a, a fruit bowl with watermelon. I also got a pressed watermelon juice. I just... And I bought watermelon from the store. Like, it was just like watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. I stopped at the fruit stands and I got watermelon and just had tahini and lime on it. It was just watermelon, watermelon was like my favorite thing craving. So that was like my first time I actually had a real, real craving for something outside of spicy and lime. Um, I was fatigued. Um, I had headaches, nausea, and I felt a little bit faint in this week. Um, on the 10th, though, baby name, I came up with a name that I wanted to name the baby Chase Alexander. Um, I think that name is just absolutely gorgeous, and I thought at the time I was Team Green, so I thought it was a very unisex name that could go either way, Chase Alexander for a girl or a boy. Let me know if you agree with that. At an appointment on the 13th, I think I ended up going into the emergency room. Um, my blood pressure was 114 over 73. And everything seemed, turned out to be fine on that particular day. I had some, it looked like I lost a piece of my mucus plug. Um, and it freaked me the hell out because, again, I've never had anything like this happen to me during pregnancy. And so I just felt like, please don't let this be my cervix opening up early. And I freaked out and went into the emergency room. Ultimately, the doctor told me that everything looked fine and not to worry because the mucus plug can regenerate itself and you know those type of things so i just decided all right i'll go with it no bleeding so i rolled with the punches and that's what happened with that so rolling right now was the end of the week for nine um rolling into week 10 which was the 15th through the 21st on the 16th i was fatigued i was very very tired i had some nausea i mean my nausea was still coming like my nausea would be just in the morning, I was just feel nauseous, never throwing up, but I mean, from the time I put my foot down on the floor to the time 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So 7 a.m. to 3, 4 in the afternoon. So in addition to the nausea, I had, of course, the excessive saliva, acne. I'm still dealing with the acne at this point in my third month of pregnancy. Like, the acne is just like my best friend. It's never going to go away. Um, I did experience some backache, and I had to pee a little bit more. Um, also, I had a light bout of heartburn. And I don't know if it's heartburn or if it's classified as indigestion, but more so where it feels like it's just right here. And I think that that's more classified as indigestion, but heartburn, I think around this time, like I said, I was eating a lot of watermelon and tahini and then laying down, and so that could have possibly caused an, 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 the heartburn. So on the 17th, um, I was nauseous, peeing all the time, and, and tired as all get out. Um, the 18th, um, I had to go out and actually buy maternity clothes, and this is just in my ninth week, but I had to go and buy me some maternity pants. Like, it was like, I could, I was still so bloated that the bloat never went away. So as my uterus and stuff started to grow, the bloat just stayed there. And ultimately, I went out and I ended up buying me two pair of pants and two shirts. I think were my first buys for maternity. I ended up buying um a pair of maroon maternity pants with the full band that pulls over your belly and then i ended up buying um a black pair that just had an elastic band around it no buckle or anything like that and I actually by pink baby maternity pink luxury pink celebrity maternity and i actually fell in love with that brand of maternity i picked it up from roth i think the black pink pink celebrity maternity ones were 16.99 or something like that 
and then I got the red ones. Um, they were like $9.99. I bought a little shirt with the hands on it that touched down. Um, and then for I just bought a white long sleeve shirt with the little rouging on the side. So that when my belly stretches, and actually I really do enjoy those shirts, and I do plan on going back and buying some more, um, some more gear. But for right now, um, I'm still just bloated more so. Oh my gosh, you cannot see me because whatever that is, the sun or whatever. But um, I'm just more so bloated right now. That really sucks balls. Let me try to move the camera over, and then see if we can fix the. Okay, so I bought that um, on the 19th. I was just super tired. Um, later on in that, more early that morning, I was super tired. I was nauseous, of course, and I still was dealing with the excessive saliva. Um, on the 20th, same thing, very tired. The nausea still every day, and then the excessive saliva. On the 21st, um, I had a new symptom where I was gassy. I had backache. And this day, my appetite picked up a little bit more than normal. Um, and so I could tell that I was a little bit hungrier, a little bit often, more often, um, but not so much where I needed a whole extra burger. Maybe just like I would completely finish my french fries. You know, as opposed to leaving some left over, I would completely finish the french fries. So um, appetite picked up a little bit more then to where I realized, and I don't know if it's because I was eating healthier and eating more like salads and nuts and those type of things, which are lightweight and, and um, as far as food goes. So if I was, that's the reason why I was getting hungrier sooner. And I had kicked my Starbucks habit completely. So I don't So for me completing 10 weeks and then moving into the 11th week, which I consider 11th week of pregnancy, which was 9:22 to the 28th, my symptoms were as follows on the 22nd. The same, the usual with the um, with the nausea and the fatigue in the morning. That just was a, a common everyday symptom for me. Um, what was kind of when I and then I had acne again. And when I say that I had acne in these weeks, it just means that I had I had a new breakout. Like it, it cleared up over the the last time I said I had an acne, it cleared up, and then today on this particular day I had a new breakout with new bumps. Um, so yeah, on the 23rd, just gassy, um, very tired. 24th, I was very very tired. I had excessive spit, and then my belly started to itch. Um, my appetite increased. My urine was dark for some reason, and I ended up having a headache. Um, ultimately, I did find out that I had a bladder infection. Um, and so I was put on a week of antibiotics for that. Um, and then everything else just kind of went as follows and went smoothly after that point. Jumping, jumping into week 12, um, which was the 29th through October 5th. On the 29th, I noticed that my nipples had gotten so freaking dark. Okay, they had not enlarged at this point, but they were just dark. Like, as dark as the lipstick on my lip, it's funny I have this on today, but they were really dark and then I also noticed that the linea negra on my belly had also started to take form and that had started to get dark as well so I was like wow like my skin pigmentation and stuff is just really changing and I just was able to actually notice it at this point so the linea negra and then the um, the darker nipples um, and then I had lots and lots of lotion-y, like CM, like just creamy, creamy CM, which was a little uncomfortable for me. It, it's uncomfortable for me to have that much freaking CM, like it just does not make any sense. But hey, pregnancy, what can you do? Um, on the 29th, um, I had round ligament pains. I was very, very tired, backache, nauseous. I had a change in discharge. On the 30th, I had in my pelvis as well as, um, my boobs started to hurt this day, and that was just kind of weird for me, but they did start to hurt. Um, on the 1st of October, I had a doctor's appointment, um, which on this particular day, I was tired, gassy, I had a headache, um, and then on the 4th, I had an ultrasound. My ultrasound, first movement, um, the heart rate, this is the first time that I saw the baby and saw the baby actually moving 
on the ultrasound, um, the heart rate was at 157. I was measuring at 12 weeks. Um, I was only 11 weeks and five days at this point, but I was measuring at two days ahead. Um, my heart rate, my blood pressure was 102 over 61, and I weighed 159 pounds and four ounces. Um, I had a headache and fatigue, and then that kind of concludes the week. And um, this particular week was just very touching for us because, I mean, we had seen the baby. We seen the baby at 6'5", and then we seen the baby at 8 weeks. But to see the baby at 12 weeks almost um, and see the baby moving really just kind of stopped our heart and made us really just be still thankful that we were growing and developing a healthy baby because and just to see that the baby was uh, was active and moving around and those type of things, it was just so cute. So it kind of just warmed our hearts and made us, oh, you know, type of deal. And I actually got it on video. I got a little something on video. So, um, but going into week 13, which was October 6th through the 12th, um, on the 10th, I had to go to the ER because I woke up that morning to get my baby dressed and when I went to the restroom there was blood, like enough blood to where it turned my toilet water red and it freaked me out. Um, I was 160 pounds, my blood pressure was 103 over 66. Um, week 4 and then that was pretty much all that took place in week 13 that freaked me out as far as that goes and I mean that can freak anyone out to and I wasn't put on bread rest or anything. Throughout this whole period in time, my first trimester blood blood draw had showed that my platelets were low and my doctor has been referring me to a hematologist. Haven't been able to get in touch with the hematologist. I've actually called, left a message, actually got a referral. They called me back. They said that I let them know they'd be calling me back. They still have yet to contact me about it. In true fashion, as usual, I'm now going to jump into the pregnancy Bible. And as you can see, I have a lot of things highlighted in this third month. There was just a lot of stuff going on, lots of information about the baby and its development. It was just an exciting time for me. So, again, as I said, week through 13, 9 through 13, this is the last month of my first trimester, excuse me. So, this was exciting for me to have made it this far. So, in week 9, my baby was an inch long and was the size of a medium green olive. In week 10, the baby was nearly an inch and a half long and the size of a prune. Um, and it officially had graduated from an embryo to a fetus. The bones and cartilage are forming and the small indentations on the legs are developing into knees and ankles. The elbows on the baby are also already working and functioning. Um, the baby teeth are forming also underneath the gum. The stomach is producing digestive juices. The kidneys are producing urine. And if it is a boy, the testes have started to produce testosterone. So week 11, my baby was just over an inch and a half long, now weighing about a quarter of an ounce, and hair follicles were forming as well as fingernails. Um, human characteristics by now are being able to see on the week 11. Week 11 is the week where you can actually see the baby and you see the little hand nubs, the arm nubs, and the feet nubs. And you can actually see the hand buds sprouting and the feet buds sprouting, um, making the baby look more human, as well as an open nasal passages at the tip of the baby button nose and visible nipples. Um, week 12, my baby was more than doubled in weight and size during the past three weeks, weighing now at a half an ounce and measuring about two to two and a half inches, like the size of a small plum. Our digestive system is beginning to practice contracting movements so that the baby will be able to eat. Narrow, um, the bone marrow is making white blood cells. And in week 13, as your first trimester comes to a close, the head reaches the size of a sweet peach um, from baby from head to butt reaches the size of a sweet peach at about three inches long. Um, the baby's intestines, intestines have started to move from out of the umbilical cord back into the stomach of the baby as well as the vocal cords have started to form. So that was like very, very interesting. And then another fun fact like this one here, the page that shows you there, it just shows you that um, it says that this week your uterus is a little bit bigger than a large grapefruit. So. Um, that's the development and the growth of the baby in the third month. Um, now it goes over the symptoms and stuff. Physically, I felt fatigue and sleepiness, which I mentioned. Um, I did have nausea. I did have frequent urination. I had the excessive saliva still. Constipation. Oh, my God. I still was dealing with the constipation up until my third month of pregnancy. Um, I did see a practitioner, and they told me to eat um, not only to drink water, but to eat um, peanut butter 
on on stuff, bread, peanut butter, and stuff like that, more fiber to help regulate me, and I think that it's actually starting to work. Um, I had the indigestion. I had gas a lot this month. My boobs did start to change, as I mentioned. I had the darkening of the nipples. Um, I did have occasional headaches. No real veins except I could see the veins on my boobs where I could see that the blood circulation had picked up. And then outside of that, that was pretty much it. Um, emotionally, I felt pretty much fine. I didn't really have any issues or anything like that. So then the book just goes on to discuss things like um, constipation, which is there labeled. Um, constipation, which I have highlighted. Gas, which are just symptoms that I was going over. The headaches. It just tells you basically the headaches. It just basically tells you how to maintain them, what's normal, what's not normal. Um, let's see, I didn't have any, any worries about stretch marks showing early. Um, I was showing, like I said, I was bloated this entire time, so I just felt like I'm showing early. But of course, they break it down and give you reasons, possible reasons why you're showing early. One is bloating, excessive gas, and bloating off behind premature protruding tummies. Bowel distension can be contributed to if you've been very constipated. So, like I said, I was battling constipation, which is one of the reasons why I probably was showing earlier as well. Um, extra pounds, I don't really think that was it. Small build, I don't really think that was it. I think I had a normal body weight. And then less muscle tone. I, it's a, an expected mom with loose abdominal muscles, maybe have a pronounced pooch faster than a mom, first time mom to be, which is true. I had three daughters prior to this, so. I can say that maybe my muscles weren't as tight as they should have been or used to be, so of course I would start showing earlier. Um, one of the other things that I did experience was cramping after orgasms, which would freak me out, um, but it, you know, it, it has a section here in the book that says cramping after orgasm, and basically it breaks it down to you as to when it's okay, when it's normal again, when it's not normal, what to look for, when to call your doctor. Um, and then this particular section just tells you about working on the job, how to stay safe, how to protect yourself, your rights on the job, changing jobs, and so forth and so forth. And then it leads into the fourth month of pregnancy. And so that's pretty much it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will be posting the other videos more in detail about weeks, you know, weeks throughout this month of pregnancy and actual how I felt, how I felt in more detail. Um, Stay tuned, rate, comment, and subscribe. I hope you like it. Stay tuned for this journey, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a good day.